Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Desmond. I'm a final year computer science student at University of Malaya. In this video, we are going to attempt to solve the lab 2 imitation lab questions. There are six questions in total, so this would be the Java fundamentals, uh, which should be the easiest of all the other videos. So without further ado, let's get to it. So for question one, you are asked to convert USD to uh, Malaysian Ringgit and the answer should be in two decimal places. So let's try to do that. Um, let's first ask for the user to input some data that we can use. System.in Then let's save this in a double. USD equals to scanner dot next double and let's give the user some instructions enter USD all right then according to this rate one USD is 4.18 Malaysian ringgit we just need to um, we just need to calculate the MIR by multiplying USD with 4.18 then we should be and we should be good to go to output the MIR to the screen but um, to output it in two decimal make sure that you use the printf method and use percent percent dot point two f which stands for output this in two decimal and put a comma over here and put in MYR. So when we try to run this, it should ask us to enter USD, let's say 10, then the output should be 41.80. 41 so um, that's it for question one. Let's move on to question two. Q2. Right, so for question two, we are going to calculate the monthly payment for house loan. The following are the inputs of the program all put in two decimal places. So basically, we are going to ask the user to enter this, um, these four variables, and then we would output the monthly payments, which is calculated using this formula. So um, this program asks us to implement a formula that's given in the question. All right. So to ask input from the user, we are going to need scanner system.in. Remember to import that. All right, and let's put everything in double. P equals to scanner.next double. Enter price down right. Let's just do this one by one. Enter price, enter down payment, double D, and enter interest rate in percent. Let's call this R. Next, let's enter the loan duration in a year. And call this Y. Right. Finally, after asking all the input from the user, we are going to um, calculate the monthly payment. The monthly payment M, which equals to P minus D times one plus R times Y divided by one hundred divided by Y times twelve then we should output the monthly payment back to the screen. All right, um, we should do this in two decimals, so we have to use printf. And over here, we say %.2f, then put in the monthly payment. Let's put in RM here as well. 
All right, um, let's run this program. Enter price, let's say 10,000. Down payment, let's say 1,000. Interest rate, maybe 4%. Loan duration, 12. And the monthly payment should be 92.50. So um, that's it for question two. Let's move on to question three. Q3. All right, PSVM. Write a program that generates two random numbers. The range is 20 to 70. Display, sorry, two numbers, some of the numbers, and the average in two decimal places. So in order to generate random number, we are going to need the random object. So let's create it over here. All right. So with the random object, we can generate two random numbers. In number one, random object dot um, next integer. So from 20 to 70, that's uh, we need to calculate the range from 20 to 70, which is um, 70 minus 20 plus 1. So 70 minus 20 plus 1 is 51. So this 51 means that there are 51 numbers between the number 20 to 70. And then, so um, we are going to plus this with 20. So this, this line of code, um, this, this part of code over here would generate a, a number between 0 to, let's set again, 7 minus 20 plus 1 to 50, right? So in order to generate um, numbers between 20 to 70, we are going to um, add 20 to the 0 to 50. So the smallest number, 0, after we add 20, it would become 20. The largest number, 50, after we add on another 20, it will become 70. So this is how you um, generate numbers between 20 to 70. You first define the range, use the random object to generate the range, and then you add on whatever the smallest number is. Alright, that's for number one. We have to do the same for number two, so let's just copy and paste the code. So now we have two numbers. We have to output the two numbers to the screen. So the two numbers are, let's put a space, and num1 plus n num2. So let's try to run this first. So uh, in this case, the num1 is 35 and num2 is 64. And these two numbers are in the range between, uh, between 20 to 70, which is as stated in the question. So after displaying these two numbers, we are going to calculate the sum and the average of these numbers. So in sum equals to num1 plus num2, and it's pretty straightforward. We just need to output the sum to the screen, all right? And then for the average, um, for average, let's use double average, and let's do double num1 plus num2 over 2. So the reason that we are using double over here is because we want to change um, this, uh, the sum here, oh, actually we can use, just use the sum because um, the sum is equal to num1 plus num2 and um, the sum divided by the number of elements, which is 2, should give us the average. So we just need to change, so we just need to change the sum to a double type so the sum is um, an integer type. We need to change it to the double type before 
we do the average because if we don't um, the answer is going to be an integer so sometimes average can have decimal points so in this case we are going to change this to a decimal uh, representation before we divide it, divide it by 2 and get back the average so let's try to print the average out plus average alright, um, let's try to run so if we have 59 and 67, the sum is 126 and the average is 63 and if we have 51 and 62, the sum is 113 and the average is 56.5 alright, that's it for question 3, let's move on to question 4 Pill 4 As usual, the main method. And for Q4, we are going to convert the milliseconds to minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. Alright, so um, to do this, we need to know how many milliseconds are there in a second. And just Google it one second, two milliseconds. So, one second is equals to 1000 milliseconds and one minute is equals to 60 seconds. So, let's write it out first. One minute is 60 seconds. One second is 1000 milliseconds. So, um, we first have to ask the user to enter some milliseconds. And to get this, we are going to use the scanner system.in and let's output the milliseconds. Oh, let's get the input, sorry. Um, scanner.next int. Alright, milliseconds and to change the milliseconds into minutes, seconds, and milliseconds, um, we would start with the first, the largest one, which is minutes. All right. So let's calculate the minutes. So milliseconds divided by one thousand, we would get the seconds, number of seconds, and and if we divide it by sixty. So uh, this would give back a second. If we divide the seconds by 60, we should get back the minutes. So now we can have the minutes. All right, and we have to calculate whatever that's remaining. So let's define a remaining here. Remaining equals to copy this same thing, but we are using a modulus over here and change this to uh, times actually we could also change this to make it look consistent All right so um, we would calculate the what whatever that's remaining from the minutes so after we deduct the minute we are going to calculate whatever that's remaining and change this remaining to seconds so seconds is equal to remaining divided by 60. All right. Oh, sorry, divided by 1000. So this is the remaining milliseconds that we have, and we just have to um, divide it by 1000 to get back the seconds. And then for the milliseconds, um, it's a similar pattern like this one. Just need to copy, paste, and change the sign to a percent. All right, we have defined this above, so we cannot de de define that again. All right, so now we just need to change. Uh, we just need to output it to the screen. Let's say, um, after conversion, and it is. minute minute plus 
seconds. Class milliseconds, right? And let's try to run this. And some milliseconds, let's say um, an arbitrary number. So after conversion, this is equals to 103 minute, 51 seconds, and 232 milliseconds. So that's the way you solve um, question 4. Now let's move on to question 5. For question 5, we are going to calculate the sum of all the digits in the number. Um, and m equals to 1, 2, 3. Then the sum of digits should be equal to 1 plus 2 and plus 3. Alright, so um, in order to do that, we are going to um, um, declare a, a sum of digits over here equals to zero. And then we are going to do a while loop and make this run as long as n is greater than zero. So every time the sum of digits will be added with the remainder of n divided by 10. So the first time this runs, this sum of digits will be incremented with 3 because 1, 2, 3 divided by 10, we would get back a remainder of 3. And then we need to make this n into, um, we have to trim off this tree because we are going to add 2 next and then we have to trim off this 2 and we have to add 1 uh, in the end. So in order to trim the number, the, the final digit off, we are going to divide it by 10. So the first time it runs, n is uh, 1, 2, 3. n 1, 2, 3 modulus 10, it should return 3. So the sum of digits is now um, 0 plus 3, which is, which is 3. Then um, we are going to divide n by 10, so now n is 12. And we have to go back here, because 12 is larger than 0. We are going to keep running the block inside this. So 12, because n is 12 now, 12 percent 10 would give us 2. And we have to add that to the sum of digits, which is 3 previously, now we are going to add 3 to 2. So the sum of digits is now 5. And we are going to divide n by 10 again, so now 12 divided by 10 is 1. So now n is 1 and goes back up here. 1 is still larger than 0, so it will keep on running the code inside. So 1 percent 10 is 1 and 1 divided by 10 is 0. So um, this code when, checks, when it checks, 0 is larger than 0. Is it true? No. So this code would eventually stop running and we would eventually output the sum of digits to the screen. Alright, let's try to run this code. So the sum of digits is 6, which is correct. Let's try another example. In this case, the sum of digits is 15. All right, so that's it for question 5. We are going to do question 6 next. So for question 6, we need to calculate the force given the mass and acceleration given the formula, um, so it's pretty easy and straightforward. Um, let's just define a double mass, double M, which stands for mass, equals to 10, and double A equals to maybe 2, and we have to calculate the F, which is M times A. And then we just need to output the force
plus F and Newton. So let's try to run this. So 10 times 2 is 20, so the force is 20 Newton. So um, we have completed all the six questions in this lab too. I hope that this video is helpful to you. If you think it's helpful, do share it with your friends. Like this video and subscribe to the channel, that would help me a lot. And see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.